Okay, welcome to our game theory lesson on duopoly, strategy, and pricing. So, as we know from principles of microeconomics, an oligopoly is a type of market where we would say there's a few sellers, right? There's not one, as you see in a monopoly, uh, with a monopoly, but there's not many, like monopolistic competition and perfect competition, but there's a few. So that's an oligopoly. A duopoly is just an oligopoly with only two sellers. We're going to look at two different types of, two ways to model duopolies. Um, these actually can model oligopolies in general, you know, beyond just two firms. Uh, for this class, though, we only deal with the two firm case. So the two types of models, Carnot models and Bertrand models. The Carnot models, well, we're going to have two firms. We assume they're selling the exact same product, so something that's identical. And the difference between the Carnot model and the Bertrand model is what we assume each firm is deciding to do, like the firm's choice. In a Carnot model, each firm decides the quantity to produce. So each the firms compete against each other by choosing a quantity, and the prices follow from the quantity. The Bertrand's actually opposite. They'll choose the prices, quantities follow. Um, but for now, we'll focus on Carnot. Each firm decides what quantity they will produce. The demand curve will then indicate the price they could charge, right? You have a market demand curve. Uh, with the market demand curve, the other firm is going to sell some amount. You're going to sell some amount. That determines what price can be charged, right? That's relatively straightforward. So the question we'll be looking at, what output will each firm produce in a Carnot model? Well, to do this, each firm makes some conjecture about how much the other firm would produce. So the firm comes, starts in with some assumption on what the other firm would produce and uses that to determine their own output. So once you make some assumption on how much output the other firm will produce, then you can choose your own output level and determine what the price will be in the market, how much profits you would earn. Uh, of course, the other firm is doing the same about you, right? If there's two firms and you take the role of one of the firms, you're making the conjecture on the other firm. The other firm's making that same conjecture on you. And what is the Nash equilibrium, or in this case, the Carnot Nash equilibrium? Well, it's going to be the stable point, the point where you're both producing, where neither uh, you nor the other firm wants to deviate away from this particular equilibrium output. On this, uh, both Carnot and Bertrand, we'll go through several examples. I think these are relatively straightforward, but much easier once you go through and see how the example works. So we have an industry demand curve. Price equals 50 minus the quantity. Right? This is for the entire industry. There's two firms, remember, in the industry. The cost that each firm has for the product is $2 per unit. They're selling this identical product. Uh, I don't write this on the notes, but you could assume this big Q equals the sum of quantity from firm one plus quantity from firm two. It might even be worth writing that into the notes. I usually would use a, a lowercase Q to indicate each firm's output. So lowercase Q one, lowercase Q two. You don't have to have that. Know that the Q is the entire industry output. We can use calculus, and in fact, um, in class, I will be showing you how the calculus can come up with some equations to solve for this, which might even make your life a little bit easier. Uh, but for now, we're just going to fill in a payoff matrix. So price equals 50 minus the quantity. The per unit cost is $2. In this payoff matrix, right, I have different outputs that each firm could offer, 8, 16, 24, and 30. What I'd like you to do is use the demand curve, the per unit's cost. Remember that profit equals total revenue minus total cost for each firm. And fill in the profit to firm one and the profit to firm two for each of these 16 possible outcomes, right? Where each firm produces eight, each firm produces 16, 24, 30, or some combination in between, right? Firm one could produce eight while firm two produces 16, 24, or 30. You know, any of these combinations are possible. So go ahead and fill out the profits for all of these. Um, bring that to class. We will go through that then tomorrow or the next time 
me see you in the next time we have this in class. The Bertrand model, uh, in a way the analysis is a bit easier than the Cournot model, as you'll see in a moment. So the Bertrand model, this comes from Joseph Bertrand, who thought sellers wouldn't focus on quantities, they'd instead focus on prices. So that the seller would say, I need to charge at this price, and because of, and, you know, at this price, then I could produce X amount of the product. That is what Bertrand uh, came up with, and so the assumption here is that firms compete with prices. The, the, any firm that has the lowest price will sell the product. If multiple firms have the same lowest price, they would share the sales. Any firm that tries to price higher than this lowest price has an out will sell zero. They won't sell anything. So in a way, it's kind of like that perfect competition assumption of perfectly elastic demand. If somebody is selling at a particular price and another firm comes in and tries to sell it for one penny more, they won't sell anything. But as long as you come in at the market price, you can sell as much as you'd like. So firms with the lowest prices will equally share the market demand at that price. Other firms will have zero demand uh, for their product, or the quantity demanded for their product would be zero uh, under the Bertrand model. Okay, in this simple game, what we can see, and I mean I made up the numbers on this one, um, if the firms are selling for the same cost, they just are splitting whatever profits are there to be made. So if they sell it for $1, $2, or $3. If um, one firm is charging a lower price and the, another, and the other firm is charging the higher price, so what about the case where firm two is charging a dollar? Well, if firm one is charging two or three, firm two gets all the sales for a dollar. They sell as many, they sell all of the sales go to firm two and all for one dollar. Uh, the opposite case of firm one is selling for a dollar, firm two tries to sell for two or three. Or if one of the firms tries to sell for two dollars and the other tries to sell for three dollars, you see the case where the firm that's trying to sell for two dollars is the only one that gets to sell the product. The other firm gets zero. Well, in this game, what is the Nash equilibrium? Well, so you can see actually each firm you know, the five would be great. The problem you see with that is if you are at this five zero, it's, it's, so it's, if you're at this five zero, the firm who's getting zero will want to switch. So it's not a dominant strategy to choose one, but you can start to eliminate, right? Producing three is a dominated strategy for both. And then once you eliminate that, actually producing two is a dominated strategy. So by the iterated deletion of dominated strategies, the Nash equilibrium, both firms charge the lowest price they could charge, which is a dollar. So both firms charging a dollar is the Nash equilibrium of this game. Each firm earns a profit of one. Note, once again, like a lot of other games, firms could be better off if they colluded, charged a higher price. That's kind of, in a way, it's kind of like a prisoner's dilemma type game. But with the Bertrand model, what we see in this very specific stylized example is what we will always see. The Nash equilibrium is for both firms to charge the lowest price possible. So the price is going to be equal to the marginal cost, which equals the average cost. So firms aren't going to make profits on this, or at least not any profits beyond the normal profit level. So the Nash equilibrium, both firms charge the lowest price possible. Price equals marginal cost, which equals average cost. Firms earn no profits uh, under a Bertrand model. So that's two different ways to think about um, how we model duopolies. And we will, in class and on your exams potentially, uh, you may have to attack both the Cournot and a Bertrand model. Uh, final thing to note, if a game is indefinitely repeated, which we haven't hit yet, but we will be soon getting to repeated games, if it's indefinitely repeated, you might get to a different result that perhaps is a little more interesting. Also, if products aren't identical, you might get to a result that's a little more interesting than firms simply choosing to price equal to the marginal cost or average cost. So there are extensions, you know, that are perhaps a little more realistic, you know, more real world uh, extensions where the results get a bit more interesting on these. For an undergraduate game theory class, though, we don't get into that. We cover kind of some of the basics.